No matter if you're growing your orchids in organic media or inorganic media or even mounted and you need to change mounts or want to pot up a currently mounted orchid, ignore that part if you mount your orchids in a landscape. But for everyone that is anticipating a repot session with orchids, this video will give you the first steps you can incorporate into your pre-repotting routine. It will help prepare your orchids as well as help them recover from the stressful experience which comes with every repot. If you are familiar with the growth habit of your orchid. Start administering light concentrations of CalMag and seaweed. Do this even if you do not see any new growth starting. Being familiar with your orchid helps you get a head start with any anticipated new growth process. In this way, you are already providing the orchid with the best building block nutrients ready for when the new growths emerge. And the growth hormones in the seaweed will help support the hormones already mobilizing within the orchid to start the new growth cycle. And that could be roots growing first or an actual eye starting to swell. If your orchid is already advanced and a repot is imminent as per what you think needs to be done, let me me put some breaks on because if your orchid is not growing new roots, do not repot. Wait for new roots. This includes orchids that are in old media. Please leave an orchid in old media alone because more often than not, the structures are fine, the orchid is coping, and if interfered with too soon, can cause the orchid to go into setback mode, or as we affectionately say, the orchid will sulk. Secondly, ensure that your temperature ranges are within what the orchid requires to grow well. These two factors pretty much ensure that your orchid will not suffer any setback no matter how radical your repot session will be. If these first two conditions are met prior to a repot, you're pretty much securing a successful stress-free recovery of your orchid post-repotting. Finally, the day has arrived. Depending on how long you waited, it is a happy day. A day that comes with a lot of relief because finally you get to repot your orchid and I hope a fun day because as far as I'm concerned who doesn't like to play with our orchids anyway on the day of repotting sterilize all the tools you think you will need for your repot which can include tweezers a sharp implement snips and or secateurs anything that you repeatedly use between orchids your previous repot for your future repot etc sterilize them all. Also, mix up a revitalizing cocktail of CalMag and seaweed, anywhere from a total of 100 parts per million to 300 parts per million, of which 30% should be the seaweed value, the rest being CalMag. Soak the orchid in this cocktail for as long as needed, especially if you have roots that have adhered themselves to the outer edge of the pot. If need be, you can test how much more you need to keep soaking your orchid by using a thin implement and wedge it between the roots and pot and see if the roots come away easily. If they do not, continue soaking until they pop off relatively easily. No matter the media that your orchid is in or the choice of the media you will be potting the orchid up in, ensure that the pH of your CalMag and seaweed cocktail has a value of 6.7 to 7 pH. And while your orchid is soaking, prepare everything as far as the media you use, the new pot you intend to use, prepare all of that ahead of time. This way you do not have to scramble looking for things once the orchid is vulnerable, out of its pot with roots exposed. Instead, you are fully prepared to get the roots into the new pot sooner rather than later. With these three important factors in place, know that you're all set, take your time, and happy repotting. Then watch your orchid not skip a beat and continue growing along its merry way, solves any controversial or problematic issues. If you are in any doubt as to how long you can provide for your orchid in old media, check out this video next, which I will link in the description. It will provide you with all the answers, and trust me when I say, as well as peace of mind for the time period leading up to the actual repot. In the second part of this three-part series, we're going to cover some helpful tips, maybe some tricks that you can incorporate into your future repots, ensuring that they are stress-free for you and for your orchid, making this the best and most successful repot season for your orchids. And part two and three video will be linked in the description once they have aired, so have a look down there to see if they have already been linked, and then you can just go through the entire series in one fail swoop. But before 
I let you go, let me ask you, what do you do as a pre-report routine? Is there anything that you do differently that you want to add which helps your orchids and you out that I have not mentioned here? If that is the case, please share that in the comments because it is very easy for us to fall into a routine which works for us, but there are so many other things that could also be added which we had not thought of. Thank you for sharing your experience with the rest of us orchid hobbyists and thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I wish you a wonderful repotting season. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. The support is much needed and much appreciated. Have yourself a fabulous day on the condition though please that you stay safe. Take care, bye!